Hey, Sally. Here we are again at Hero Central VBS. Woof, 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 woof. So yep. today, yep. we're going to learn another story about Jesus. Oh man, I love those. Yeah, yesterday yep. he was 12 years old yep. in our story and at the temple. Yep. Today, he's a full grown man what? and he's going to give a epic sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. Oh man, I've heard of that. It's yeah. a big deal. It's a really big deal and yep. it takes up a significant portion of the book of Matthew. Three chapters. That's a long Yeah, that's a, sermon. that's a lot of print. Yeah, and we're gonna look at part of that sermon and it has kind of a funny name. Really, what's the name, Sally? The Beatitudes. What does that even mean? I'm really not sure. Okay. But that's what we're gonna learn about. Well, I'm curious. Well, I guess you better pay attention during Bible time All right. then. I will stand at attention and I will pay attention. Well, let's go and let's learn see. about the Beatitudes. I'm excited. All Me right. Too. Let's ha go. Have fun, kids. We'll see you in, yeah. in a few. In a little bit. Yep. Bye. Bye. Heroes, welcome back. I'm excited to get to spend more time with you at Bible Story Headquarters, exploring the great stories of our faith. All of the stories so far have focused on people who already knew how to do what our hero verse says. Do good, seek peace, and go after it. Remember, last time we were together, when I told you that Jesus grew in wisdom and years, in today's story, Jesus is many years older and wiser. Just before our story took place, Jesus had been down in Gal Galilee, traveling and teaching. When people heard that he was also healing the sick, the Bible tells us they began to bring everyone who was ill, in pain, paralyzed, or suffering from other physical problems so he could make them well. As a result, great crowds formed all over, beginning, beginning to follow him. He became famous for helping people. He was their hero. On the day of our story, when Jesus saw the crowd that was growing around him, he sat down on a mountain and let them gather around him. Then he began to teach them. This story was part of a bigger message called the Sermon on the Mount. This part was called the Beatitudes. That's a funny word, isn't it? Say it with me. Beatitudes. Beatitudes is a word that comes from some older Greek and Latin words and it means blessed or happy. Jesus taught the people the Beatitudes as a way of comparing how things are now with how they will be. That even though things may look hard or feel bad right now, we can have hope that they will get better. Just as Jesus, the healing hands, had given the people healthy bodies, his wisdom was about to help them have healthy lives and a brand new hope. There's Jesus now. As I told you, Jesus had noticed the big crowd, so he let them gather around him here on this mountain. He began to teach them, saying, Wow, there's more people than usual here today. If you guys don't mind, I'd like to walk around and get to know these extra people. Hello there, new friend. Hello. Thanks for visiting us today. Do you mind telling us why you are here? Well, Jesus is my hero, right? And I really want to be a hero too, you know? Only... Only what? Only... I'm just terrible at it. I try and try and do good and seek peace and help people, but I just keep messing up. Oh, I'm hopeless! Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wow! That was cool! Yeah! It was! What do you think he means? I 
I think he means that even though you're hopeless now, God will bless you and help you, and you will truly be happy. That was really awesome. Let's see what else we can find out. Hello, friend. Hi. Oh, my. Are you okay? I don't think so. You see, I want to be a hero, too, but... Uh... Aw, it's okay. But what? But I lost someone very important to me. Not too long ago, I've been sad and, and mourning about it for a while now. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Really? Wow, okay, who's next? Yes? No, I want to be a hero too, I think. And I'm pretty sure I have some talents to offer. Oh, but is that okay for me to say? Do I sound like I'm bragging or something? I just want to do good. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Thank you so much. I want to be a hero too, but it's so overwhelming. There's so much good to be done. How can we ever accomplish it all? It's like trying to feed a bottomless pit or fill a bottomless well. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I want to be a hero too, but I'm not sure I'm getting it right. I want everything to be perfect for you, Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I want to be a hero too. But I've got my hands full with my brother and sister. Whenever I think I have a minute to do something heroic, they start arguing and fighting. Then I have to drop everything and help them work it out. Or who knows what trouble they might get into. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. I want to be a hero too, but I'm so upset. My best friend really hurt my feelings. And I don't know what to do. He deserves for me to stop being his friend forever, but I know I would miss him. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. I want to be a hero too, but every time I try, people make fun of me. They call me names and talk bad about me and really make my life difficult. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. You always know just what to say. Well, how about it, friend? Are you glad you came to see Jesus? Do you feel better? Yes, I do! Why is that? Because God's heroes have hope! Awesome! And what are you going to do next? Do good! Seek peace and go after it! Yeah, you are! You go, heroes. So Nick Neck, Patty Whack, welcome back. My name's Zach. Today is day quattro of Science Headquarters. So in our Bible story today, God taught us that we could find blessings and hope in some surprising places. So our next experiment may reveal another surprising example of how God works in mysterious ways. So here we got this bag and we got some really sharp pencils. So what do you think will happen if I take this pencil and just stab into the bag? It's probably gonna spray everywhere, right? Well, let's find out over this safe tub here, just in case. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna stab it straight in. Cross those fingers, there we go, okay. Oh, there we go, all the way through. All right, so maybe we just got lucky, let's try it again. 
All right, almost all the way in on that one. Let's try another one. Oh, we got a little bit of a drip, but it's not like spraying out like I thought it might. Let's do another one here. Boom, there we go. We got all four pencils in there. Yeah, so it's still holding. It's dripping a little bit, but it's holding up surprisingly well. So plastic bags like these are made out of polymers. And polymers are long chains of individual molecules called monomers. So when you puncture these bags with a pencil, you're separating the polymer strings, but not breaking them. The long chains of molecules squeeze together tight around the surface of the pencils, preventing any sort of leak. So when we pull them out, they will not be held together anymore. And that's when we'll start, whoops, start getting the leak there. I'm just gonna set it down. Okay, so we may have been surprised that the bag didn't leak when we punctured it initially, but God wasn't because God can see what we can't. God knew the molecules would do their job and hold together. God also knows that some things in life can be hard to handle, and God gives us strength to hold together too, and that keeps, gives us hope to keep on going. God's story, the good news. So part of God's story is about the gospel, or the good news, and it goes like this. In the beginning, God made everything. The sun, the moon, stars, planets, the entire galaxy. And Earth was part of that creation. God made mountains and oceans and forests and deserts and animals that crawled on the ground and flew in the air and swam in the water. Then he made people, Adam and Eve, to live in a garden called Eden. And God called everything he had made good. There was just one rule. Adam and Eve could eat anything they wanted except for the fruit from this one tree. But a snake tricked Adam and Eve into disobeying that one rule. Because of that, sickness, sadness, and all kinds of bad things came into God's perfect creation, all because people made wrong choices. Part of how God punished Adam and Eve was by not allowing them in the perfect garden anymore. And if that were the end of the story, that would be bad news for us. That would mean all the wrong stuff in the world would never be made right. But God still loved people, and he had good news for them. He was going to send a rescuer. So they waited, and waited, and waited. Then one day, the rescuer was born as a baby named Jesus. Christmas is when we celebrate the good news of Jesus being born. But it's not just that he was born, it's what he did later that was the best news of all. He took the punishment for all the wrong choices that anyone has ever made anywhere. See, all of us have continued to make wrong choices, just like Adam and Eve did. And just like Adam and Eve, we deserve to be punished for our wrong choices. But here's the thing, Jesus the Rescuer never made a single bad choice. Kids, think about a time you made a bad choice. Maybe telling a lie, or taking something that wasn't yours, or hurting another person with something you did or said. Can you believe that whatever that was, Jesus never made a choice like that? And even though he never made a bad choice, he still took the punishment for our wrong choices? And then Jesus did something even more completely unexpected. He came back to life. Really, you can read about it in the Bible, in the stories written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call those books Gospels, which is just an old fancy word for, you guessed it, the good news of Jesus coming to earth, dying for our wrong choices, and coming back to life. That's what we celebrate on Easter. But not just because coming back to life is totally amazing. By coming back to life, Jesus was showing that God can make anything new. There's nothing God can't do. He's more powerful than any sadness, shame, wrong choice, disease, disaster, and even death. And that's the best, most amazing good news of all. It's so amazing, Jesus' friends told everyone they could find about the good news. And those people told other people. And those people told other people. And on and on. And that's still happening today. In fact, you just heard the good news. And the Bible says, <clears throat> If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's another way to say God rescues us. And that rescue includes you. 
your friends, your family, and anyone else in the whole world. And that's the story of the good news. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect world. People made mistakes and the world isn't perfect anymore. God promised his family a rescuer. The rescuer's name is Jesus. Jesus died to take a punishment we deserve, but he didn't stay dead. Jesus came back to life because Jesus can make anything new. And that's a part of God's story.
Hey, welcome back to Science Headquarters, everyone. So in our story, Jesus taught people that God's king, what God's kingdom would be like. His words give them hope, so they followed him and tried to stick with him wherever he went. So in this experiment, we're gonna get a picture of how people were drawn to Jesus and his message. So I've made some bubble solution here, made out of water and glycerin, and we're gonna to try to make some bubbles. All right, we got our little bubble blower here. Let's dip it in. There it goes, that was a lot of bubbles. That was a lot more than I thought was gonna happen. So, bubbles form because of the way soap affects the surface tension of the water. The hydrogen atoms in the one water molecule are attached to the oxygen atoms in the other water molecule, so they stick together. So soap allows you to push some of the water away from the rest, and that part gets separated and becomes a bubble. If you make just one bubble, it'll float away, but if you blow air through the cloth cap bottle, you're creating hundreds of tiny bubbles. As the air passes through the fabric, the smaller bubbles stick to one another, forming the bubble snake that you just saw. So because of the fabric on the, bo on the bottle, these bubbles were drawn to each other and tried to stick together. People in the Bible story, and even people in the world today, want to stick together closer to Jesus too. The power he described to them in the Beatitudes gives people hope. So God gives all of God's heroes hope as we stick with God. Our hope grows and we can become strong enough to make it even through our toughest times. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called heroes of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven.
man, it was the best. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I listened to the Bible story. Yep. And those beatitudes. Oh man. Wow, there were a lot of people being talked about in those beatitudes. Yeah, there really you are. You had the me. Oh, the me. And the poor in spirit. Yep. And who are those? People, Ralph, what does that mean? Well, the Beatitudes show the attitudes of people that are following Jesus Christ. Oh, well, but what does that mean? What does it mean to follow Jesus and, and how do you do that? Well, when you study the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that our good acts and righteousness have to exceed the good acts and righteousness of the Pharisees for us to go to heaven. That's impossible. That's true. Nobody is that good except for Jesus. That's also true. Jesus never sinned. Ever. But I sin all the time. So what Jesus shows us is that we need him. We need a Messiah, someone who lived perfectly on our behalf. Oh, so because I'm a sinner, and I can't live perfectly by myself. Right. Jesus did it for me? Exactly. He did it for you. And you are able to become a Christian when you put your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. You so, turn, yeah. So I have to, to realize that I can't be perfect. Yes. Oh, wow. Yep. Wow. We, we've all sinned. You have to admit that you're a sinner. Yeah. And you have to believe that Jesus is God's son. Okay. That he came, that he lived a sinless life, and that he died on the cross for our sins. Yeah. And then you have to confess him as your Lord and Savior. Oh, wow. Yep. You, you commit your life to following him. And when you do that, the Bible tells us our sins become forgiven. Well, that's awesome, Ralph. It's amazing. That's great because I've been really worried because I knew that I couldn't be good by myself. I knew that I wasn't cutting it. That's right. We're never to trust in our own goodness, but only in the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, he had all the goodness. All of it. That's wonderful, Ralph. Thanks for telling that to me today. You're welcome. And if you are out there and you need to put your trust in Jesus, talk to your mom or dad. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. That's really great. And moms and dads, if y'all are watching this and need any help, call the church or something. That's a good idea too. Yep. That's what the church is for. We want to help. Wow. Gosh, Ralph, I think this has been a great day. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. So, are you going to come back tomorrow? You better believe I'm coming back. I'm going to invite some friends of mine. <gasps> That's a good idea. Yeah, this is pretty I fun. I will too. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think we'll see everyone tomorrow. Yep. See you tomorrow, kids. Hero Central VBS. I'm so excited. Me too. Let's go. Let's go. Bye. Let's go eat some Pop-Tarts or something.